And if it's bad timing, it's bad timing. Hey, I need a minute. Okay, got it. You got got a minute? Go over here. I used to, but please talk to me. Do you still love me? But but I just want to know if are we are we good? Are we good? Are we okay? We're gonna make it. Are you know, are you breaking up? Seriously, was it something I did? Was it something I didn't do? Mother effort. I just said I need a minute. Give me a minute. Oh, so you just mean you need need a minute? It took me about 18 years to realize she just needed a minute. Was he the first one that said I love you? I don't think so. Really? I think that was after Mike. You got people dropping love yous on you all over junior Mike. high and after freshman year? Then it wasn't freshman year. I came in and took you from Mike. I did no, it. God. I did it sometimes no. when I started cheating on you in like 2004. Yeah, but that was like a rose from 7-Eleven. How do you think but I ran like, into Mike? 60% of those people that get married get divorced. I believe about nine plus out of 10 of those are avoidable if they would understand some of these concepts because we essentially arranged our own marriage. And while they're talking about living together and doing these different things, you can see who the egos are, the stronger egos. This is my way, you know, the, the prim and proper, perfect girl who's 30 and, and, you know, her, all of her Bible tabs are perfect and all of her highlights are cut. She's that type, the, that type. And so her ego is blaring. Oh, you think you go and put your toothbrush there? Like, wow, whoa. And they're like, okay, but then they show the drama or what seems like drama. Then they end up talking off camera and they're just giving their perspective. And like, you know, we're going to have to compromise about some things. Well, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a give and take. And it's going to, and I understand the sentiment. But I just sit there and I think about it. And I'm like, you know what? Freaking blessed could do an offering for newlyweds down the road to help them get started right. So we don't have to fix all your problems once you're all messed up and on the path. Right? Because that's what we got to do constantly. Constantly work on our problems along the path. Yeah, but it's a repeat process. And not that, not that they're ever going to go away. But knowing what we know now after 20 years of doing this and our story in particular, which most married people cannot understand. You cannot relate to it unless you've done it, unless you've destroyed everything and actually got divorced, separated for a year, started moving on with your life and then do a complete overhaul and transformation and get it back better than most people that you ever see. When that happens, you learn some things. It's not cockiness. I feel extremely blessed by what God has done in our life with our willingness. However, I'm watching these young couples and they don't understand. They're missing some things. And I just want to read it and we can talk about it. This is what I wrote down in bed last night. Yeah. Remember that yeah. when I was writing? Yeah. You thought I was texting somebody. Who are you texting? You, who are you texting over there? I am not. Who are you texting? 10 o'clock PM. That's the one. So I'm a, this is real quick. This isn't long. Uh, let me see. We say compromise. Mm, dang it. Marriage doesn't need compromise. It needs integration, it needs fusion. You can take this for a relationship that you have with people at work, you can take this with your fishing buddies, you can take this with your bandmates, you can count it for business relationships, and you can count it with, with country, world leaders meeting together in a summit to have conversations. This is how to treat people right. This is how to have win-win deals where everybody comes out victorious because the two players in the deal, they need to win they need to feel good so each is strong and set up because the people that they're going to go serve, whether it's constituents for the, for the political people, whether it's consumers for business or businesses that are getting served by other businesses. What is what? What? I got to make sure that this is set up. That's what it's for. We say compromise to say that we'll give up something to make it work. We'll, we'll give up something. What we're doing is we're developing new connections by our own growth and evolution that forms a new, stronger unit. When she tells me what she needs, when I tell her what we need, we are growing and, and evolving as a human, as a person, as a partner, so that I can grow so that she is stronger inside us. I hope that makes sense. For, for you Bible scholars out there, you know the three, the three rope braided cord right you know the three strand braided cord this happens not because we forfeit a piece of us it can only happen from deciding to deny the ego that little girl on that show little miss proper her ego is raging because she's 30 she hasn't dated in 10 years she lives on her own she's already a detailed type personality who likes what she likes and likes how she likes it i have a lot of that and She's going to let you know how it is. 
And I was like, okay, wow, she's the one who really reminded me because she's thinking about it wrong. The ego will always hurt the relationship when it's tested. But it's, it's we have funny. to deny the ego. One more sentence, then you can rip. Then we offer a piece of our heart as the material that strengthens that fusion. The piece of my heart says, you don't want me going around looking for, what, for, for something that the boys did wrong. My ego wants to be, put the boys in their place and tell them how to be because we're raising men and the house has got to stay in order. But the love, you use a piece of your heart to integrate with what the other person's desires are so you're both winning. There's no compromise there. Compromise means I'm less. I have to compromise. What do you say when the weld is compromised? Like the weld for, for stuff, right? The structure is compromised. The foundation is compromised. Uh -huh. Compromise, you don't want to compromise. It's a bad word. You want to fuse. And the only way you can fuse in a three braided strand is you have to put your heart in there because it's the only thing that's real. And when your heart's messed up, now you got a weed or a poison vine in there and it's not strong anymore. It doesn't take compromise. It's a bad, bad mentality. It's a bad paradigm. And we're going to help the, the young ones out too with that down the road when that pops up. So go ahead. What's your thoughts on that? I was just going to say that that's how they showed her how to be. But then when they interviewed her, she wasn't like that. Like her thinking wasn't that way. So of course, I she, think she wasn't the only one. Certain, I know that. Now, I don't like I her. That. I don't, nah, I don't, you, I don't. Will. you will. She's growing on me real slowly because she's cute. And I believe she's trying. I watched a lot more last night. Uh, you did. did. But many of them said, you know, it's going to be a give and take. And it's, it's this, it's 50, 50. You got to, you should, you should watch what you fell asleep on. Like, I'm not talking gonna, about I'm the just, show. I'm just saying though, there's going to be a lot of notes. That's I just, I said, we're going to watch this again as a freaking case study. And yeah. we're going to build some material around it. Cause I nobody else doing it. Mm-hmm. Gonna, there's a gap. It's a gap in the market for real people teaching about real life marriage. Yeah. And, it, and it's not all psychotic. Just a little bit. <clears throat> but the other people too. They, all of them, even the ones I liked. You gotta give up something. It's not that. I work 100% of myself so I can be strong, solid, secure, and actualized in myself and not self conscious. That's the only way that you have a chance of having a great marriage. Right. And you doing that for you is the only chance I have of having a great wife like you for a great husband. Mm -hmm. And then we bring that together. Woo! Why do you think they use the term power couple? Because each has power. They're not insecure and in needing the other to validate them or do whatever it is that they're doing. And some of us might be at different paces in that path. But as long as we're both on it, your heart's open to see it. That's powerful, man. 50 50 what's the other 50 get video games fishing cycling exercise i'm obsessed with my workout that gets 50 you get the other 50 hmm ain't nobody doing 50 50 anyway 99 one their bosses get 99 percent. family gets one i'm trying to be too hard but this is stuff we're trying to fix stuff we're trying to help people see our mission is the transformation of the family and there's a there's a lot to that there's a lot to that. Misty, good morning. There you go. That struck me last night while I was watching a bunch of single for too long, couldn't get a date, horny young people trying to get married so they can get, get some satisfaction. That's what I thought it was at first, but they're not. like. So Timmy wants to know um, how you set boundaries for yourself without pissing someone off. How do you set boundaries for yourself? Right. Like when I, like when I tell off. you, leave me alone. Like I seriously. Oh, so they don't alone. get offended? So you can help protect their ego because you need to work on you. Like, I'm not, it's not. Is that what he's talking about? The reason about? some, listen, first of all, is it, well, yeah, validate what Nikki said, Tim, is if that's, if that's what it is. You don't want to upset them, but you want to lay out the expectations that you need so you can thrive and be in the right mindset. Like, if she's a, like the one couple, she's like, you are complimenting me a hundred times a day. And when you see the guy do it, you're like, oh, that's so annoying, right? He's like. He's like the 12 year old that got the, the girl to say yes to like holding hands. And now he's just like, it's like, dude, blah. when I was a freshman in high school, I hung out with some kid. Tell it. I don't know. And he, after, after two weeks, we we're at my house and I was laying on the couch with my head on his lap, like acting like I was sleeping or he thought I was sleeping. 
and he told me he loved me <laughs> and I still acted like I was sleeping and I didn't say anything. And then he left and then I never, I totally stopped answering his phone and like never called him again. And like, dude, you're weird. That's crazy. But that's how that would make me feel. Well, you obviously don't have daddy issues because you would have fell for that because it was the first one that came and we wouldn't be here, you know? Yeah. He wasn't the first one, but you know what I'm saying? The first one that said, I love you. Was he the first one that said, I love you? I don't think so. Really? I think that was after Mike. You got people dropping love yous on you all over junior Mike. high and after freshman year? Then it wasn't freshman year. I came in and took you from Mike. I and that was, was that, that was your, that was at the end, that was going into junior year. I don't remember when it was. Summer between sophomore and junior is when I took you from Mike. I was already done. Saw that dude recently, man. I saw him rocking the cash register at 7-Eleven, gas station, mobile, no joke. No offense either. If you think that's funny, you got to check how you feel about people that are 7-Eleven cashiers at mobile gas stations. Because I'm just saying where I saw them. So first of all, I want to get back to this. The easier somebody is to set off, regardless of the topic, the easier they are to set off, the smaller they are in their spirit. The, the, the less oh, they understand who they are as a person, the less comfortable with themselves they are, the more that they, they their face is this and their arms are crossed up and they don't want to, you know, fear, fear. But it's not only that. People that get upset easily, it's, uh, it's just hyper insecurity. So that's one issue. Sorry about the video. I realize I keep touching. That's what that's doing. Yeah, it's doing that. Shaking the table. Yeah, yeah. And because uh, it's on a stand. And anyway, so that's one thing. But as reasonable as you can, man, the way we work with each other is no matter how upset the other one is, and if it's bad timing, it's bad timing. Hey, I need a minute. Okay, got it. You got it. Got a minute going over here. I used to, but oh, please talk to me. Do you still love me? But, but I just want to know if, are we, are we good? Are we good? Are we okay? We're going to make it. Are you, know, are you breaking up? Seriously, was it something I did? Was it something I didn't do? Mother effort. I just said, I need a minute. Give me a minute. Oh, so you just mean you need, need a minute. It took me about 18 years to realize she just needed a minute. For an hour. An hour. Two. Maybe half a day. Maybe an evening with the ladies. I just need this. That's it. I'm not saying anything else by that. There's no other implication going on here. I just need this. In my own insecurity for so long, okay, you sure? Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Uh, I, I just don't believe her. And then I get online. Let me see if I can get flowers.com to deliver something because I know it's going to be something I did. Like, Have I ever? I'm I don't a, know if I've ever gotten flowers from you. A couple few times from flowers.com. I've done that a couple times. And then I brought them home different times when I felt guilty about stuff. Or You're not seriously going like to say I, I don't remember ever getting flowers. No, that's like, the most ridiculous thing I mean, that anybody, that's like saying, you know, I never noticed you had big teeth. Like you're lying right now. You're lying. We've been together. NASA, the, the space station on Mars uh, knows that. 17 years. I know you did it when you were like in boot camp. Actually, I think your mom set a lot of that up like for gifts. I she did it. Got, I did it sometimes stuff. when I started cheating on you in like 2004. Yeah, but that was like a rose from 7-Eleven. How do you think but I ran like, into Mike? But like twice. <laughs> Jeez. No, but, but it's, it, I mean, it's definitely not. It's not a common thing. Mm. It's not a common thing. But she's also not a common girl because she's, she was never really into jewelry. And I think that changed. Whoops. For women, any gift that you give her and say, I found this and it made me think of you, they're going to love it anyway. Yeah. So what, what did that have to do with insecurity though? I don't know. The way that I say it with you, because we all have levels of insecurity, all of us. The way that I try to protect her from that reaction, to feel those things, because I don't want her to, it's not my intention, is that I state my intention. I let her know, hey, I'm, and I, and I have them too. So when she comes to me, we've learned how to do that with each other. Hey, look, I want to bring, I want to mention something. I want to bring it up. I'm not upset, not mad, nothing. But it's an area we, we have to address because I'm not feeling right about it, whatever it is. You put that into words, you lay it out there, and then you say it. You know, I, I wouldn't use language necessarily like every time you, that's probably not super productive, but this, this scenario here happens, and here's how I perceive it. Here's how I respond to it right now. Some of this might be my own messed up stuff. Some of it, I think, is not the best for us, 
and I want to see, and here's what I'm thinking. If we did this, maybe this, what do you think? You collaborate, you come up with ideas, you don't complain, you bring solutions to recommend. Just did this on the phone yesterday with somebody. And then you have the conversation and you work it out, realizing that you're on the same home team. You, you, you're not against each other. These things seem obvious, but they're not. If they were obvious, couples wouldn't fight like they do. Well, they, they wouldn't have the animosity that they do. Because we're emotional beings. They're always they, acting like they're antagonists against each other. Then why the hell are you together? Freaking break up, dude. Move out, get a divorce. Stop it. Seriously. No? We talked about this. Either start working on getting your act together and really heal and become a strong unit that is actualized together. And what I mean by that, you understand who you are and you're comfortable with it knowing your faults and all that's what i mean by that so they act like that yeah and that's a big that's that's the entire root focus of what our stuff is that's coming out free and paid later we're helping people remember you, like the intention here was forever like you wanted that ride or die that partner like the con the soul connection that's like that's the intent and we're, most of this is helping people do it. Like, that's why we don't, we're not going to do the professional thing. We're not going to do like, I don't want to get some counseling degree. There's stuff that's above my pay grade is what I, we, and above our pay grade. When people have real problems, like you, you need a real professional. But I think most people, probably 80 to 90, 90 plus percent of people that get divorced, the 60% of people who get married, give or take, 60% of those people that get married get divorced. I believe about nine plus out of 10 of those are avoidable if they would understand some of these concepts. I believe it with, from the bottom of my heart because we essentially arranged our own marriage when we got remarried. We've looked at it that way over time because it's what we did. Neither one of us were coming in as puppy dogs, right? Mm -hmm all butterflies all the time and it's just the one the girl oh the girl on the show she's sweet but i feel bad for the heartbreak that's in her future potentially because all she ever says is it just feels so right it's so perfect it's so perfect i just love kissing my husband i love kissing my husband and she's a sweetie and she's been waiting she's in for heartbreak man bad expectations going in with the wrong mindset I think if we taught more mindset in these premarital classes that people do take, if we did more mindset, I think we'd have to do a whole lot less skill teaching the way it's done. We try to teach skills to help people improve their marriage or anything. If you don't have the right mindset going in, the skills aren't going to be there because you're going to quit. You're going to fail. You will. I think people same with athletes. You act like I interrupt you on your interruptions, I by the way. It, I think it's too, I think people complicate it too much. Okay. Or it's going to be too hard or we're, we're too far gone. There's no point or whatever. Like it's such a common problem. The majority of the time people don't know that because they don't talk about it. So then when they hear us talk about it, they're like, oh, really? That's so good. And they can relate and whatever else. And for us, like even, what was it last year when we went and saw that lady in Tampa yeah, twice? put out a lot of money to do it because of the cycle that we we're on. And like every month it was just really bad. I mean, she to basically told us like, you guys know what to do. And it, and it was like, that's what she said couple, to us. And it wasn't even, I mean, she gave us like some tools, stuff that we had already known that we had already done, but a lot of it Lost is just, our way some. a lot of it is just perspective shift and how you're looking yep. at thing. And like, yeah, that's totally normal, but you know, and it's just lack of communication total lack of communication. So I was going through stuff just as you were. And then your stuff was also getting put on me and it was just a lot. And it, that's just what we weren't communicating about it at all. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the highlights from our Facebook live. Nikki and I do these every day at 11 a.m. Eastern on my profile page. That's something you want to check out. Check out the link in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about Nikki and my story of four years of drugs, affairs, divorce, and then our eventual remarriage and how we're living today as a couple that's freaking blessed. If you want to know more about that, ending autopilot, the, the marriage that just exists, how to smooth out communication and, and become friends again with your significant other, 
head over to freakingblessed.co and get yourself set up for a free three-part mini course that's coming out in a few weeks. All you gotta do is put your email in. You'll be the first reservation there. Nobody else in the world will get this first. You will. Head over there right now to do that. Freakingblessed.co. You'll be glad you did. And let us know what you think. DM us or email us, Adam or Nikki at freakingblessed.co. We'd love to hear from you and hear your story.